The following is an interview I had with Trinidadian author Hazel Ann Lynch, author of the book Senor Fluffy, A Cat's Tail. Hi, good day listeners. Welcome to Tropical Literature Creatives. And today we have with us Hazel Lynch, author of the book Senor Fluffy, A Cat's Tail. Hi, good afternoon. Hi, welcome Hazel, welcome Hazel. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me. I feel so honored to be here today. Well, the honor is all ours. How are you today? Uh, I'm I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. Really excited. Well, it being the first day of the year and oh, I'm getting the opportunity to do something I really enjoy doing. That's wonderful to do the things that we love and enjoy. That that bring us the most rewards. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Well, yes. just for the listenership, Hazel, can you tell us which Caribbean island you have ties to? Well, besides Trinidad and Tobago. We, where I was born, my mom was born in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Plus, I will say I have um, also family in Curacao, and I have friends in different parts of different islands. Ah, yes. Okay, interesting, interesting. Well, mm-hmm. here's another question, or rather a scenario I usually post to the person who I usually host on the program. Imagine we are meeting each other at the airport. I'm coming to Trinidad for the first time. What would you recommend that I try as I'm here in Trinidad? What food would you recommend or what place you would recommend that I go? I will have to recommend things I love because I know about them. But the food, I will have to say, I don't like a particular food. Not because I'm a Trini, I like one thing. Mm -hmm. I will have to recommend, firstly, chicken pillow. Ah, okay. If you like chicken, that is, because you can do it in various ways. Chicken, goat, whatever. Hmm. Um, pig food, whatever, but pillow for one with some coleslaw and avocado or some potato salad. Mm-hmm. Man, mm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but some shirt, of course, roti, polori, and doubles is a must try. And um, bacon shark in um, at Maracas way, of course. Ah. I think you can get it like in St. James of anything. But um, bacon shark is a must. And um, places to go, well, any of the beaches, Maracas, mm-hmm. the Tyrico, I can't remember some of them. Yeah. And of course, t- things to eat, boil corn mm-hmm. and some of our fruits, I must say. Oh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Have, you ever, have you ever eaten a Julie mango? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's, it's simply the best. It's simply the best. Mm-hmm. We, have so many, we have so many things to offer in Trinidad and Tobago. Not just places, foods, the people are wonderful and, you know, just different things and it's uh, according to what you like. But I think coming here for your first time, you could find a lot of things to do, places Mm -hmm. to visit, things to do and things to eat is a must. And we have a lot of nightlife. Ah, okay, okay. I mean, so in addition to the writers, it seems that person should just visit Trinidad just to see what's happening there as well. Yeah, man. (laughs) Come on, anytime you like. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, okay. So giving us an overview of your island. Tell us a bit about yourself. Like, where do you go to school? Where do you live right now? Things like that. Oh, where did I go to? Oh, well, I live, the East, you call it, it, I live in Montoup. I went to Mont Lambert Roman Catholic School. Mm -hmm. And from there, after I set my, um, what was it then? Um, After I set my exam, I always wanted to experience, uh, um, a school that is run by none. Mm-hmm. And I got the mm-hmm. opportunity when my parents sent me to St. Dominic's Convent, which is in Barataria, 6th Avenue, Barataria. Ah, okay. And then I realized that, hey, it's, it's for girls, but to me it was no different than going to a school that is for boys and girls. You know, it, to me it was the same, really. It's just that it didn't have boys. Okay. You know, not okay. to say nothing, but they didn't miss it, you know, because it was so fun. Plus the, 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 Nuns, they were very strict. Most of them, especially Sister Moira and Bo- Roach, mm-hmm, she passed mm-hmm. away now. But to me, it's, sometimes it was like being in the army. Whoa. But you know, with those kind of growing up like that, and with um, when you reach late, you're being rem- reprimanded, and you know, you have to be, it's a different to me now. Kids, we back then were so 
more focused and so you know you had so many you had rules and you have to follow the rules and to me nowadays it's not the same as when we were going to school mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know and then after that i did some um business classes i mm -hmm, did some mm -hmm. classes in uv and stuff like that and little work at the side and stuff and you know so. okay i mean interesting interesting mm -hmm. I mean, I've, and one thing, sorry, not cutting you off. Oh, I sure, actually sure. wanted to be a nun, you know. Oh. Yeah. That okay. is why I wanted to go to the school, actually. I wanted to be a nun, but they said, no, I have to be a light in the world. And I was like, how do you even know that? <laughs> <laughs> but, then, but then I think they were right. I couldn't wear those. Um, I think I would have to wear a neon color um, habit and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You mentioned a bit about your education, about how it is that you did business, for example. I mean, in addition to business, I mean, what skills do you think that you would have learned that contributed to you as a writer, as an author? Hmm. What skill? Yeah, what skills? What skills? Hmm. I don't particularly knew, know what skill. I think, really, I'll have to say writing. Mm -hmm. I write a lot. Even... Well, yes, writing, you have to be a writer, but um, I think reading, I don't know, is that a skill? Reading. No. I don't know what per se contributed, but I know I think my love for reading really helped me in wanting to become an author. Okay. Yes, okay. Because I read and I still read like that today. I think it's really my love for reading and my love for um, having pen friends all over the world, even ah. today. Okay. I think okay. that is combined that is why i started on this journey to be an author i mean as you had pen friends or, or pen pals someone might some persons might use it to them interchangeably it that looks like a good opportunity to practice sitting down putting pen to paper yes uh, and i guess that would have contributed to you putting your books together as well sitting down writing as you would have been doing it so often it would have mm -hmm. been sort of like a, a practice or even some might say a discipline that would have helped you in, in putting together your writing yes Mm, I'm disciplined with my letters. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it could really lead you to be, I think you're more disciplined like that. And when you practice to write every day, and I think it's important when you're a writer, you're really just like if you want to lose weight or whatever you want to do, mm -hmm. you have to do it consistently, like every day, every day you get up, you write. Some people want to write and it's next year I'm going to start. No, you just have to start already. If you never start, what will be the outcome? You'll just promise to do it, do it, and you'll never start. Mm. Well, it might take you years, but I think just you just have to start and from there you do it every day and then it becomes routine, you know? Because mm -hmm. when I get my letters, I know somebody at the other end of the world is reading and I reply. So mm -hmm. I get my stationery, my pen and paper, and I write a beautiful letter to that person. Mm -hmm. Then I post it. And, you know, so it's kind of the same, you know, you have a routine. And if you want something done, you have to really get up and do it because nobody could do it for me but myself. Mm -hmm. Agreed, so agreed. I think, yeah. I mean, I think oh, you set the base for my um journey as an author that started it. Okay, okay. I mean, in addition to a consistent discipline, a while ago, off air, you were talking about skills that you would like to have. You could think of any skills that would really help you out in any of your future writings or anything like that. Yeah, I think one of one thing I will really want to learn is to how to learn to navigate um well some social media, um, the computer better. And of course, I would like to do um animation. I am oh. um, I love animated movies and I think I always had a knack for that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I used to do drawing and sketching when I was younger. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm good, but I would love to be able to do these things so I could illustrate my own books also. I okay. don't know. I have a lot of dreams. Okay. Okay. Nothing's wrong with that. Nothing's wrong with that. No, no. I'm, I'm just curious though, you, the book that you did right now, who was responsible yes. for doing like, the illustrations, like the cover and the artwork for that? Oh, um, that was done by Candy McGregor from Pandalific. She's, she's a Canadian graphic designer. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. we met on... We met online in a poetry um class. We used to do every Saturday poets from all over the world. And one day I just, I don't even know how I got to go on this thing. I think one day I was just Saturday bored listening mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to something. And I just happened to click on to this thing with people. Mm -hmm, and I just mm -hmm. like, although I'm not much of a... I write poetry, but I really don't like it too much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Kinda, yes. 
-hmm. But it was interesting to know that it have so many people and come together for this one thing every Saturday from what and South Africa and it's different time zone. And, you know, we form a bond, you know, people mm -hmm. from Russia and all different places. And it's like, oh, my God, every Saturday you're so excited to go on at whatever time in the day. Where? You know, so we form a bond and then we, when we start to talk, we, well, oh, you saw that? Well, you know, I write in a book and such. And we started to talk and we still mm -hmm. do, you know. Mm -hmm. A lot of friendship developed from this um COVID and being online and stuff. Yeah, I mean, that, that sounds really great because I think one of the things about COVID is that a lot of persons weren't able to go outside and to socialize. And here it is, you're telling me that this forum for poets, it was quite the opposite, yeah? in addition, not just quite the opposite. I mean, you're meeting persons not just from your own ear, but persons from different regions and countries. And I guess one of the good things is that you met this illustrator woman who was able to help contribute to you getting your work published and everything so that sounds really exciting yeah and she's fantastic and we keep in touch and when i post everything she always you know compliment me and you know not just that we each other we speak to each other how's everything going how's your mom your grandma because you know you get to know the person through being online so so long and so you get to know them more intimately and stuff i'm a person i will tell you i don't like virtual i like in person meeting i'm a person like that mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. i'm a bit shy although people say that's not true but i am <laughs> but i really like to meet people in person i'm a people person but being full, you know, sometimes you don't have to get dressed if the people don't have to see you. And it, it's more, um, I think it let people maybe let loose a little. You form so many friendships all over the world. And, you know, it has its um, positive and negative, I think. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I, I got a lot of great friends from this, not even people like that, but I got a lot of new pen pals also. So it's a great thing, you know. But I just don't like too much of virtual. I like one on one. But okay. I mean, you know, that's okay. No, no, it sounds more than good. It sounds more than yeah. okay. Yeah, it's more than okay. Because you develop great friendship. Yeah. yeah. And it sounds like networking works in your favor because again, uh the same woman who you um, were able to meet who helped you with your illustrations. Yes. I mean, while we're on the topic on networking, are there when it is that you had to put together your book? Um can you think of anyone else who helped um, in terms of getting a book from conception to published product? Well, I think everybody, I, I know a lot of people, but sometimes they may not really have anything to do with the book per se of me mm -hmm. getting it out there. Mm -hmm. But I think sometimes just knowing certain people like my the, the librarians in Brooklyn, Oh. To, um, who I form great friendship with because, of mm -hmm. course, I like books. So I always used to live in the library. Friends here who I always used to talk their air off about senior fluffy or the big bad <laughs> wolf or this. Like, how do you think this song? Or do you think like I have like? Do you think this is could be a story? Or you know, sometimes although you have confidence in yourself, you remember you're wondering like, okay, if this really go to print. What mm -hmm. would people think, mm -hmm. you know, like if it really sounded like something feasible, you could really put out there into the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have a lot of confidence in myself. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Sometimes you're wondering, well, what will other people think of your work? Although it's like, well, they don't have to love it. They just have to love it. You know, no. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, you know, no, but I... I think everybody I know had a certain role to play in me getting out there, including my family and stuff, you know, everybody played a, a different role. And maybe from everybody being who they are to me, that helped me to develop this story. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I would well, say. I mean, while we're on the topic of this story, let's just switch gears and talk a bit about the book in question. For the idea of Sydney or Fluffy, where do I, I mean, where do you get it from? Where, do you, where was your source of inspiration? Let me tell you. I was at a function at um, Grand Army Library in um, New York. That's the biggest library in Brooklyn. And we were, um, it was this workers' writers' workshop, um, grad, not graduation, like some author, some people had a first a piece published. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to this guy 
And I realized when I opened the book, I said, I didn't realize you were right. Well, you are a writer, but I didn't realize you had piece published before whatever. I think he said he didn't. I can't remember. But his pen name, his pseudonym was Senior Fluffy. Oh. And I don't know why, but something about just this Senior Fluffy got me so, when I tell you, I was so excited. I was just so calm outside, but inside me, to me, inside myself, I was just jumping up and down like a little girl. <laughs> and I was wondering, truly, what was going on? It was like an out-of-the-body experience. And I asked him, well, how did you get that name? I said, I just want to know. Mm-hmm. And up to this day, I don't know what the guy told me. Because between him telling me how he got that name, I just had an idea. Or oh, I don't know, God gave me this idea, the voice of inspiration. Mm-hmm. to write a story about a cat born in France who gone to Brooklyn with this rich human. And I was like, okay, what's going on? Because I'm saying like somebody telling me to write a story. When I'm seeing the person I'm talking to, his lips is his lips are moving, but I'm not hearing anything he says. But I was hearing this voice loud in my ear and I was watching around to see like, what is really going on? And I then I pinched myself actually. And I was like, mm-hmm. wait, I felt that. And then I just say, Bryce, shut up, shut up. I say, sorry, I don't need to be rude. Eh? But mm-hmm. I have this story. I just, do you have paper? Mm-hmm. He said, mm-hmm. say, get me some napkins. Quick, quick, quick. Before <laughs> I forget the story. And I don't know. I just sat down and I started to write. And I said, Bryce, I am taking your pseudonym. Is it okay? I said, wait, do I have to ask you for that? Anyway, <laughs> I want something to eat. And this is my, this is going to be my piece of the pie. I say, I don't know. And I, then I told him, and he said, mm-hmm. wait, in that two seconds, this idea came. I said, yes, it's the strangest thing. Mm-hmm. And from that, the cat wouldn't leave my brain alone. It's, everything is about senior fluffy. I don't know. I didn't have a thought in my head before about this cat. It was booted right there when Bryce told me. When when I saw in the book that Bryce pseudonym was senior fluffy, that is where the idea, and I didn't have a thought before. Mm-hmm. Never did this thought flash before my mind. I idea about a cat. I never thought about nothing, a story about a cat before. Okay. It's only then and there it was booted, and I don't know how. Just hearing those words, Senior Fluffy, that just came to my imagination, and I was like, yeah, I'm still flabbergasted up to today. How did that even? When it is I was reading the book, I thought it was really interesting because, mm-hmm. as you mentioned, Senior Fluffy, he's born in Paris. Uh, how yes. do you? What's the what's the term that you used to describe? A para, a Paris Parisian, Parisian, Parisian cat. Yeah. But here it is. He has the the um the title of Senor. So I'm wondering why not Monsieur Fluffy or anything yeah. like that. But I, yeah. you know, I I leave it as is. You know, I guess creative liberties. You know, not yes. Senor, not Monsieur, Senor. No. <laughs> well, I find when I write, I like to think outside of the box. Really, sometimes you say, okay. He's from France, so he should have Monsieur. But why does he have to? Look at the amount of Venezuelans in Trinidad. People don't ask them now. If they say the name is Carl Lewis, people might say, well, how your name is Carl Lewis and you're from Venezuela? Or sometimes mm-hmm. we might just think it. Or even meet in a Colombian or mm-hmm. from somebody from Argentina, you know? Sometimes mm-hmm. we just have names that is not of the country or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. I like to really write things different. I know people, people always ask me that. Why not? You know, that is French. I say, yes, but that is not what the story is about. Maybe his name have a meaning. Maybe he's that because of something. Mm -hmm. And it's coming Mm -hmm. in one of the book. It might not come in the first or the second. Maybe the two, depending on how far this journey is taking me. I don't know yet. Ah. But I always like to have people think when I write. Ah, you know, yeah, I, I like, like why. You know, I like what you do there. You set up this story for something else later on. So yes, yeah, yes, I like, I, that. Like, I like that. Yes, I like people to think while they're reading my story, like, hmm, you know, mm-hmm. that kind of way. Yeah. Well, that was really on my mind as I was going through the book. Well, I know. <laughs> I guess a lot I mean, of people ask that. So, yeah. Okay, so I, I'm glad I'm not the only one. But in addition no. to Senior Fluffy, I mean, your book has a bunch of colorful characters. I mean, Senior Fluffy, Esmeralda, Molly. I mean, when it is I'm introduced to these characters, I just get the impression I've, I've never been abroad. I've, at least I haven't been abroad to the States. But yes. sometimes when I interact with persons who live in the States, I just get the impression that 
persons from the Caribbean that they usually run into other persons from the Caribbean. And when I saw these characters interacting, that's the impression that I got that it was some sort of really small Caribbean community, persons of various nationalities, um, they're meeting and they're interacting. Was, was that the intent in the piece as you introduced each of these characters? Uh, I think I liked flavor when I write. Mm. Um, and not because I'm a Trinidadian, I should only write about Trinidad. I like to write about maybe things people wouldn't even think about in a story. Or I don't know, I think I like, like to give like characters a different kind of, hmm, what should I say? Well, when you go to New York, it's really a melting pot, right? You meet so many people from so many different countries, not only mm -hmm. the Caribbean. I have a mm -hmm. lot of Russian friends. I have a lot of Moroccan friends. I have ah. people from all over the world. If I go, I have Chinese friends. I meet Japanese. And, you know, I try to learn like like um one line in a, like sometimes when I know they're Japanese, I might say like hello in Japanese or mm -hmm. Chinese or and they say oh you speak that you said that like a Japanese I say really so mm -hmm. I should go to Japan then <laughs> but it's such a melting pot and you meet so many people and even if I went to to New York I had no so many different people in Trinidad I was a social butterfly I like to go dance a lot so you used to meet a lot of people but I think when I went away, it really opened my eyes to a lot of, you know, different people, places. And I always had a thing for countries. So, you know, mm -hmm. and I have a lot of Jamaican friends. I met a lot of ah. Jamaican people up there, I should say. And, um, well, Americans, of course. And, um, well, Trinidadians, yeah, I'm a Trinidadian and stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. But I like to write about things I know too. And like countries I've been in, I like to write about things I have a little bit of um you know just think like things and people that you know a little bit of mm -hmm. you know yeah but I think well yeah being a melting pot I think I have to give people a little because some people might know anything about Jamaica or you know, being in Jamaica I've never been to I haven't been to Jamaica yet but mm -hmm. I've, I've met a lot of Jamaican people and they always talk about their country. We make jokes and stuff. And sometimes some of them can't understand how Trinidadians go to party and just dance with everybody. Oh. That was, yeah. They don't like, yeah, that was a thing. With a, <laughs> that was a conversation with a, with a Jamaican girl I had at the time. She asked me that question. Mm -hmm. Why would you go to, to well, with Trinidadians? When only go to party, only dance with everybody. So I was like, because we have love like that for everybody. Oh. It's not like a man and woman thing, you know, you is my boyfriend, I have to dance with you whole night. We just have love for everybody, mm -hmm. you know? If his friends come together, we like that, you know? It's not like I can only have to dance with you. If it's 15 of us going, we are all friends, why not? You mm -hmm. know, what, what's so harmful in that? She said, well, if it was me and you um, dance with my man, man, I would have boxed you <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you forget I'm Trinidadian, right? I'm not a fighter, but you know. Mm -hmm. And she laughed. I said, no, it's just a thing with Trinidadians. We we grew up like that, so it's just a thing. And mm -hmm. she couldn't phantom that, you know, somebody is dancing with her boyfriend. I said, well, it should be. Maybe you should think, you know, why it is so. And I, I couldn't understand that concept that, you know. But I guess to each is own. And I think probably when you grow up different ways, you only know one way, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, I, one of, things. I mean, when it is I looked at the characters, I mean, I had several takeaways. And one, and as you mentioned, you know, um, when you grow up one way, yes. um, you, you, would cut, you, would be, you would have a particular mindset. But when it is yes. I read about each of the characters, again, like Esmeralda, Fluffy, Mali, et cetera, these uh -huh. are different characters. Um, yeah. Esmeralda in particular, she's very um, flamboyant. She's very outgoing. She's a sh um, she's very good at cooking, etc. And mm -hmm. and I mean, uh, she is one of the characters who stood out to me. Uh, of all the characters that you've written for this book, who would you say you would have had the most fun writing about? Hmm. I've been. I always think about that. You know, mm -hmm. I always lean towards Senior Fluffy. 
Mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. he's my main character not because but i think i think all these characters are piece of me okay. so i think they're me and if you combine all you'll get a whole me Mm -hmm. But maybe Senior Fluffy and a bit of everybody is because while I'm very, a little bit quiet, yes, I'm kind of shy. I'm very sarcastic when I speak. That some people, if they don't know me, some people, uh, some people tell me they might cry, but no. But I have a lot of love for people and I always make you laugh every day. I like to see people happy. So I think all the um, characters combined is part of is a little bit of me but I will have to say it, my favorite I really love Esmeralda mm -hmm. because I think she's really me oh. like most of her traits is like me plus I'm a good cook at least nobody has never died that I know of <laughs> <laughs> at least I don't know mm -hmm. but hmm, maybe Senior Fluffy I will have to say the most Senior Fluffy and Esmeralda but I love Mali. I love that kind of Jamaican and, you know, mm -hmm. you know, I love, I love, I think all of them is like just a piece of me. But maybe um, Senior Fluffy, I'll have to see. Not because he's my main character, but maybe because too. And, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see myself maybe in him and each of them. Yeah. I don't think I have a favorite though, but okay. I wouldn't okay. be able to choose, I don't think. Mm -hmm. I think it will be between Senior Fluffy. No, it will be between all of them because I see myself in all. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, just like I can choose a favorite food or favorite book. Who could? Ah, food. I okay. cannot choose. <laughs> yeah, no. People always ask me these questions. Why you have to choose? What is your favorite book? A book reader how how do you have a favorite book even i'm a movie addict i don't have a favorite movie i just love a good movie like a good book i'll read a good book but i don't have a favorite i don't have a favorite food maybe if you maybe pillow i guess but you know <laughs> yeah, that's just me i'm kind of complicated yes maybe i mean uh, i think that your book I have a question, you, the book that you wrote. What, what age group was it intended towards? Say that again? Uh, the book that you wrote, Senior Puffy, was it, there, was it intended for a particular age group? Well, uh, you know, when I was writing it, really, the, I was, it was not to be a children's book, you know? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I don't know, somehow the writing changed. But I wanted to be like for young adults because sometimes I guess the words I want to use because I had to cut down on the words a lot when I reread it. After I wrote it, I was like, darn, you know, because if you're a child, like, they can't see this. It's nothing rude and out of order. But sometimes I, as I say, I speak sarcastically. So sometimes I might say things sarcastic, some sarcastic thing. But I don't know how it became a children's book, actually. Yeah, yeah. I thought maybe the thought must be flitted in my mind a day or maybe the voice of inspiration. I don't know. It was mm -hmm. to be for teenagers. And then I said, maybe I should try writing a children's book because I guess because it was about animals too. Maybe that's why it went that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, I really like giving animals a voice. I don't know why. I guess growing up all those years reading all these books about elves and fairy tales and stuff i always like wondered like what if what happened after mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. i don't even know if i answered the question what was the question again <laughs> i qu went all the way out <laughs> <laughs> you pretty much answered it and then you went up with extra because i was asking uh what was the age group you had intended writing before? yes yes yeah 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 i don't yeah from but mm, well, i can't say zero to five although i have a lot of five-year-olds here and abroad that read my book mm -hmm. but i think it's really for from nine nine onwards some people say 12 but you know we in the caribbean i remember when i was really um okay well i read books some books i shouldn't have been reading at my age but mm -hmm. that didn't hamper me because I love reading. And once I find a book, I don't know what it is about, but I will open it and read it. And if I don't like it, I will put it down, you know. But, you know, I think reading really open up your mind and um, your knowledge. You, you learn so many things. People think from a children's book, you can't learn anything, but you gain knowledge from everything you read. 
Mm-hmm. You know, whether it's a horror, you must learn something, whether it's a, just a new word. Mm-hmm. I think anything I read, I always learn something and it always opens up my eyes, you know? Yeah. And your mind, yes. yes. And you don't even need a passport to, tra- to travel. You don't have to pack bags when you read a book. Just sit down. You don't mm-hmm. need a visa or invitation letter. It just <laughs> places. Hey, traveling for free through mm-hmm. books. Mm-hmm. Oh. All right. All right, Hazel. I'd just like to take a break right now and we'll recommend oh. the interview in a few minutes, in a few moments' time. Okay. And welcome back from that break. And the interview continues with Hazel and Lynch, author of Senor Fluffy, A Cat's Tale. Now, before we went off onto the break, Hazel was telling us a bit about her favorite character. So as we were talking a bit about the book, I want us to talk a little bit about the publishing and the marketing aspect of the book. Um, when we were talking, you had mentioned that you had ties to persons at various libraries, like, for example, the library at Brooklyn. Is that yeah. something that you um, did through someone else, or is that something that you deliberately did to help um, get your book out there? Well, um, when I was in um, New York, I, I love books. So I always try to be besides bookstores. Mm-hmm. But it was like a couple of years before I discovered, like it actually had libraries there until one day, you know, but the thing is, I never used to, re- all they knew is that I love to write. I never used to talk to the librarians about my writing process. They just knew I love to write, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and then really basically is when I went, reached back home, I realized that, oh my gosh, I was in New York all this time and I never asked the important questions how to get a book out when I really do write it. But Mm -hmm. I mean, I think they played a big part in me being myself, you know. I used to ask questions, but not the right questions. But then when I came home and I said, well, besides my book being on Amazon, I wanted to not just be in Trinidad, I wanted to be international. And then I started to like... um, what did I do? I think I started to email some libraries and not even the people I knew. I just started to go in the directory and just look up like Google libraries away and just basically tell them about my book and like ask them, what do I have to do if I want to see my book in the libraries in New York? Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. and then um, apparently, I guess, without I knowing or somebody, a librarian and a library I have never been to there, Mm-hmm, I think mm-hmm. somebody saw my book or heard about it. I don't know. And she read it and she then she got in contact with me. And I was like, what? Just, it was just <laughs> very tiny, you know, that mm-hmm. I'm trying to get out there and hear this librarian who don't know me, a library I've never been to. And she just saw my book and she got in, con- she read it actually. And she got in contact with me and she asked me, a lot of questions and then she asked me if I would like to be on some um a library program they had there mm-hmm. but they really wanted me to come in person too mm-hmm. and I say well right now I'll have to do it virtual and then you know and then I say you know what I'm going to try to get see how many libraries I want could get my book in because what is the sense you just write a book here on Amazon you want to be known everywhere and it's my first book so I want to see how many places I can get my book in but the mm-hmm. library the way they don't really buy from Amazon because I heard it's a long process or it's a lot of papers or something but thank God they actually did mm-hmm. buy my some of my I've seen some of my books, my book in some of their libraries. So that's a fantastic thing. I mean, in Trinidad, we have a number of like books, uh, like Republic Readers. It's uh, a book that are used in schools yes. primary mm-hmm. to help persons with their reading. If it is that you got the opportunity to have your book available in national libraries for persons to be able to read better. I mean, how would you feel about that? Well, I will feel fantastic. And... I, that is a fantastic feeling to just know that your book is in other places, not just you have it in your house or it's just on Amazon, just knowing other people could read your story and, you know, gain something from it. Mm-hmm. And just mm-hmm. knowing not just Trinidadians alone, but it's in other places. But and my book is also in the library 
it it's in the heritage department in Trinidad. And I know they got some actually of some copies, but it's not out in the libraries yet, I think. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But that's that's a wonderful feeling to know that to hear that your book someplace and it's like, what? People will be reading my book and actually, you know, it's a kind of, it gives you like um, butterflies in my stomach. It gives me butterflies in my stomach, but it's also a good thing to, you know, that not only people, not only you alone, but other people could be getting joy. At least I hope joy when mm -hmm, they read mm -hmm. the story, because I find, I think it's a fantastic story. Of course, it's because I wrote it, but... I think you could learn something from these characters, you know, and it could get a laugh too, because laughter is very good. Mm -hmm. you know? so. uh, in terms of the publishing part of, of, of your, of this particular project, I mean, did mm -hmm. you encounter any kind of difficulties in terms of getting a book published or anything that you would, that, anything that stood out during this particular process? Well, since I had no clue about publishing at all, only, all I knew is that I wanted a book published. And when I, when I wrote the, when I finished writing the book, I was like, okay, so now what? I didn't have a clue what to do. But then, you know, you go on Amazon and you start, when you're reading KDP and Amazon online, what you, what are some of the stuff you have to do? Mm -hmm. When I came back to Trinidad, when, in Trinidad, I realized I had to get a, um, a tax ID. You oh. know, and when they said I didn't have any, and I said, how could that be? I used to work for like Ministry of Health and stuff. So, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. places. So how come I didn't have a tax ID? And then it was like I didn't exist. So mm -hmm. I had to go up and down to get that tax ID. And I mean, going to government places is not easy. Mm -hmm. But I persisted and I got it. And um, and I think just knowing your craft too, you have to do a lot of research not just about writing, mm -hmm, about mm -hmm. how to, you have to learn about advertising, really what genre, what bracket you're in, who will want to read your book. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just put it in the right places. It To me, writing is the easiest thing. To me, advertising, promoting, and uh, marketing is very tough. Whoa. I try all different things I could think of, and I think I'm getting out there slowly but surely. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I think it's a very tough and a wide spectrum. And I maybe if you have a PR, they do a good job. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody who really knows how, where to get your book, what to do and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, for us in the authors, you know, it's a bit tough, I think, because I don't really know the route. Mm -hmm. I ask a lot mm -hmm. of questions. I'm on Google a lot. I talk to a lot of authors overseas you know and i watch at what they're doing and i try to do something but not the same thing because they live in a different country so obviously i don't think i could do some of the st same strategies but i ask a lot of questions here and for 2023 i'm not making any joke i'm going and get whatever <laughs> i was like no i started off the year different i mean even before the year started i already started contact some people I'm like you know like what you know, you don't have to do anything for me per se, but at least you could give me advice and something or a tip because sometimes for authors coming up like us, no mm -hmm. matter your age, sometimes you just don't know the know-how and just somebody to lead you in the right direction or just say, uh, you know, here, so you could try this, you know, and from there we can take it, you know, it's just a little heads up, like, you know, what to do, but I don't know, but I'm trying. Okay. And I okay. think I'm doing a pretty good job at it. Getting singer fluffy or whatever. He asks me all kind of thing. When is he having kittens? Like really? He is too vain. <laughs> <laughs> the question some people ask me about this cat, I swear sometimes he's real. <laughs> oh Lord. But I tell you, he will be the next big thing. I'm certain. Yeah, that character. No, I mean, it's really glad that persons who, who read about the character, they, they are yeah. interested in him like that. And it's really interesting as well that, I mean, we're getting your perspective on getting the book published because, I mean, you're saying that the writing is the easy part. And a lot yes. of us who really want to get books written, who have good ideas, you think yes. that it's just a matter of that when you write the book, that's it. But you're yes. saying that it's not just writing. No. It's wow. publishing and marketing and a lot of, a lot of work that has happened after the process. 
Yes, because how you're actually going to get it like in stores. How you, if you want to get it in libraries, not just Trinidad, how to go about, get on an ISBN number and so many different things, how to format. If you don't know to do all these things, mm -hmm. then you have to get people to do it for you and you want to get people who are really good at these things. Some people just say they know how to do things. Mm -hmm. And you have to, some people I heard about some authors who had a lot of um, horror stories, you know, people teeth in their money and stuff. Mm. I had an experience like it too. Wow. You know, my first and, well, hopefully my last. Mm -hmm. but, uh, mm -hmm. You know, but the, you just have to know who you're doing business with, whether it's mm -hmm. printing or what, you really have to know. And really research, 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 ask a lot of questions because promoting. And I think if you ask a lot of authors, unless in the authors, I don't know if the other authors who have publishers and agents and things, mm -hmm. I don't think they have this problem. I may be wrong. Mm -hmm. But I think for in the author, marketing, promoting and advertising, yeah, that is what you really have to learn about a lot. What your genre, where you want to have your book. I don't have all the answers. But I'm trying every day and I'm teaching myself and I ask a lot of questions. You have to, you know, mm -hmm, if you mm -hmm. want to get out there and have your book in the right places with the right people to see it because you never know who is watching, you know, and some somebody might just hear me read somewhere. That could be it, you know, you never know. So you just have to try to do what you could do to get your masterpiece or masterpieces out there. You know? hmm. Yeah, because you don't just want your book in Trinidad in one store. You want people worldwide reading your book and talking about it. You know this. You know, like mm -hmm. having a conversation and everybody. Mm -hmm. You want. Mm -hmm. I went to like book to come out. Everybody don't know about Senior Fluffy already. Mm -hmm. Like halfway around the world. So you know, like everybody coming. Oh my God! I wonder what happened to Esmeralda. Did she die? What? Whatever it is. But you, you just want to. You know. To be known and to be out there like that, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. not just for writing book. You, I also want to inspire people, not just to write, but to do whatever their heart desires. You know, mm -hmm, and don't mm -hmm. tell anybody. It have a lot of people will dissuade you. Oh, why are you going to try that? A writer? Oh no, why? But you know, you have to follow your dreams and do what God have you there to do. He gave all of us up different abilities, and don't let nobody tell you you can't. You have to try. If you can try, how would you ever know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, yeah, you just have to learn about the back. I think if we learn about it, we could be the best that we, not just in our given field, but whatever it is, you'll just learn about, even if it's just to make a timbre mold, you have to learn how it will sell where you want it. You just have to learn about everything, not just the thing itself, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think, marketing promoting and advertising is really yeah what we need to focus a lot on that too i mean just write in the book here i mean so i mean would you recommend that these are skills that writers introduce themselves to as well because i mean it doesn't sound like just writing is going to be enough it sounds like you have to be skilled at other things to get yeah. you to go there yeah i think so you have to be skilled i wish i could have even Sometimes use the computer. Sometimes I want to do little like flyers and stuff. And mm -hmm. sometimes I have to pay people all this asking people. And I was like, why? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I need to learn some of these things on my own. I, I am I'm on the um on Google a lot, you know, trying to learn different things like marketing strategy, advertising and um promoting. Because mm -hmm. you know, while and I like to do things that somebody else might talk about or I don't know what people are thinking about, but I like to think up of unusual ways to do things. Recently, mm -hmm. last two weeks before Christmas, I had a little competition. I don't know anything about a competition, but I had a writing, a coloring, and a drawing competition. And it was just for kids, but then adults mm -hmm. tell me they want to enter. And I, <laughs> for adults. And I had two, prof two judges came in and they mm -hmm. judged and I had a little celebration in Eastside Plaza where I am every day mostly mm -hmm. and it was really wonderful for the first time it had a, a lot of butterflies because I didn't know how it would have turned out but then after the first time it's like damn I'm going to do this sometime again 
Mm -hmm. It was really wonderful. And then to see people, it was based on Senior Fluffy first Trini Christmas. Mm -hmm. With all of the people. And the first, the first and second prize winner, they did wonderful in the writing, you know. They mm -hmm. really came that the judges were asking me if I wrote the first piece. If I the first winner, the winner number one. If I wrote it, but when I read it, I thought I had actually wrote the piece. I was like, mm -hmm. did I offer this competition? And I didn't know. <laughs> but it was like, I said, no, I really did it. And they couldn't believe that. Because when I read it, it was something like if I really wrote it. And I was like, what? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah. And I don't think anybody there ever read my book. Any mm -hmm, other kids mm -hmm. or adults, you know, but it was... Really and Kathy to see your your come up with a story, but it have similar people who will write like you. Mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's a wonderful thing. But just you have to we have to learn a lot about um the behind process of whatever we are doing. Because when we get that thing or that book out there, what are we going to do with it after? How mm -hmm. is it going to get out? It cannot get out on its own. We have to do the job. But what are the steps we are going to take to get out there? But I think before you write a book, you have to learn about all these things too, not just writing. And that's what I did. Now I'm learning. Now I can mm -hmm. teach people how to get their book out there. You know, mm -hmm. I can teach people how to get their books out there. Not because now I know a little bit about it. I don't know if I can teach, but I can surely say, well, you know what? You should try this and you should try that. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Because I learn about it through the hard way. You know, but I think I could uh, really do that now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, uh, a, it's a learning process and it's tough, but you know, with persistence and hard work, you will. I know I'll make, I'm making it. Yeah. I would just like to say one of my takeaways from the book that I really like okay. is the fact that at the end of the book, how you give recipes um, for persons who are reading the book. And I mean, I really appreciate that because yeah. in, addition, in addition to just writing the book, you actually, the persons are actually leaving with someone. If it is that, like you say, you want to get your book out there to different areas, to different countries even. I can imagine myself in Russia reading Senor Fluffy and at the mm -hmm. end I'm seeing a recipe for, for doubles. I'm seeing a recipe for, for sweet bread. And I'm like, yes. you know, this thing looks, looks really simple. Let me give this thing a try. And I not just walk away with a good story. I walk mm -hmm. away with a little piece of Trinidad as well. Yeah. And I did that too because I'm saying I'm a Trinidadian, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't know about our foods. So I think even if somebody read this in America, Russia, Poland, mm -hmm. they could at least, you know, they, I talk about it in the book and when fish, oh, it has sweet bread. Yeah. I don't know what is a sweet bread, but let me try it. And then they could actually not just read about it. They could actually try it and taste it and see, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, because you want to give people like a piece of like your life too you know like let them mm -hmm. experience something that you know about that kind of way mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah you know so i i think because i really like to think outside the box and i like to be different so i came up with that idea why don't you put add some um i never read a book that had recipes in it a story book that is a book like a, with a novel or whatever and mm -hmm. I, the ideas came to me. And when I get ideas, I just, I act on it one time. So I think that was a good, and I like that you noticed that. And I mm -hmm. like that you appreciated it. Mm -hmm. That takes, that brings me to the end of the interview. Is there anything that you want to like to share with our listeners? For example, where they could find copies of your book or what it is that you want them to take away when it is that they read the book? Well, uh, besides Amazon, you can get my book in some New York City libraries and Manhattan, mm -hmm. New York City, Brooklyn and Manhattan mm -hmm. is also in Scribbles and Quills at in Shogwanas and hotel paper base at hotel, hotel, sorry, normally 10 Nook Avenue in St. Mm -hmm. Anne's. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, sometimes you move and you leave your life behind, and you're, you're so accustomed to that life and that those friends that sometimes you don't want to move, but you don't know what the next life have in store for you. Mm -hmm. And you meet people and you realize, hey, I could have a good life here too. Sometimes yeah. your life is completely different. You could be going through different things, you know, and then you meet that person that could really open up your eyes to different things. 
Now, Senior Fluffy, he's rich and he's bougie. Then he meet Mali, who is completely opposite to him. Mm -hmm. But Mali could show, show him a, a thing or two. Not because you're high society and you're so, you know, but Mali could actually, as, as well as Esmeralda and Rina, train some things. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, forming friendship with people who you think maybe you'll never be friends with in a different life, you know? Yeah. And everybody teaching everybody something different, you know? Helping mm -hmm. out each other when the time need be and just, you know, be, by being themselves, not adding on anything, you know? Mm-hmm. Yes, and, you know, friendship, migration, and all, and, and a, a little bit of mystery, and different <laughs> things, but I think you could learn, really, you could learn a lot from that little, that little story. Mm -hmm, That's learning mm -hmm. to cook, learning <laughs> recipes. You of course, are, of course, of course. Recipe. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, seeing what life is like on the other side, sometimes, it's not always greener. It might be a little shade brown, I don't know. Or it might be brighter, greener than what you left before. Mm -hmm. It's all what you take from it. And, you know, a lot of people migrate to different countries when you're young and when you're adults. So, you know. Yeah. It's, yeah. And then uh, uh, it's like finding out who you really are, you know. Yeah. So I think it's... Uh, it's a bit about every little bit of thing you could think about. You learn so many little things. It's not just about one thing. But yeah. I think you take away so much little things from it. And you really learn about yourself in the process, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that sounds, that sounds great. That sounds great. Oh, and I really hope that the persons who get their hands on a copy of your book really appreciate reading it as much as you put the effort into writing it, Hazel. Yeah, oh, and, and I hope so too. And thank you so much for having me. And it's been wonderful. And I hope, as you read the book too, that what I hope that you got something from it as well. Oh, definitely, definitely. What, what did you learn? What What did you think was your greatest takeaway? If I could ask you that question. Oh no! Like I was saying, obviously, well, the recipes, of course. Yes. Um. <laughs> Because I'm I'm always trying to to cook and improve where that is concerned, but yes. as you were just talking there just now, you mentioned um and I didn't I took it for granted, because um Senior Fluffy like you were saying he had to move from one place to another, and mm -hmm. he had to change he had to adapt to a different lifestyle and interact with different persons and yes. it was just good to see that transition from him being who he was before to him yes. being a different person and appreciating the persons who now made up his circle. So yeah, yeah, those are my takeaways. Yes, and I appreciate that so much and thank you. That is wonderful. <laughs> of course, of course. Yes. All right. Well, that brings us to the end of the program. Again, Hazel, thank you very much for being a guest on the program. And for anyone who is interested, um, you could contact Hazel. Um, Hazel, how, how can we contact you? How can we contact oh, you? Well, WhatsApp, um, you can contact me on Facebook. I have my Facebook Messenger page, my author's page, my um, and it's just my name. My name is Lynch, Hazeland Lynch or Lynch Hazeland. I couldn't think of anything to come up with all of them besides that. <laughs> I mean, I'm also enough. on TikTok and on Instagram. And Senior Fluffy have his own page, of course. So, <laughs> of, yes, course, of course, of course. It's always oh. about the fluff. <laughs> 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 All right. Thank you, Hazel. Ladies and gentlemen, Hazel and Lynch. Thank you so much and all the best for the new year. Okay. Same to you. Same to you. Thank you. You've been listening to TLC, Tropical Literature Creators. If you've heard something of interest or something you like, reach out to us. Reach out to our authors. Follow us on social media. We look forward to hearing from you.